What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be continuing my 2023 NFL mock draft 14.2 into a 2024 NFL mock draft. Pretty sure this is the 4.0 so if you guys are new you guys want to see some more content like this feel free to stick around. We just breached 6600 a couple days ago so we are on the rise. Let's get right into this. Let's have some fun. Of course leave your comments down below. There's this draft class coming up uh, in 2024. Definitely stole some of the best stars from this draft class. So there's a lot to love about it. Let's get right in. Let's enjoy ourselves and have a great time. Starting off with the number one overall pick. This is just based off of a really quick projection. Don't get too crazy about it. Uh, again, if you guys don't like the draft order, it's probably going to change by the next episode because of the fact this is, of course, based off of a projection from what happened in the mock draft. But Kyler Murray, obviously, probably going to be out part of the season. And um, I just don't really think they have what it takes to really take a couple wins in a very tough division. So Marvin Harrison Jr., you might as well help out your guy Kyler. DeAndre Hopkins, probably not going to be there at that point. Uh, below my face is actually the mock draft that we are referencing. So it's two rounds. It's not going to be that interactive because I want you guys to focus more on the mock draft than just what happened because I can tell you guys a little bit more about what happened there. But uh, bottom line, yeah, we ended up going after Mossy Smith as well as Will Anderson. So helping out the offense, probably paramount. I don't believe that the Titans are going to be that good. I'm sorry. I just don't. Uh, if Ryan Danahill, especially if he's not there. I don't know how many free agent quarterbacks are going to be able to show up, but we didn't get one in this mock draft. And um, yeah, just not too confident in it overall. As you guys can see, Paris Johnson was that first round pick. Next, we got Drake May. Yes, Tom Brady's going to be gone. This team has some very good players, but, you know, it's a little bit tough if you don't have a signal caller. And, um, you know, your division is getting better, especially with the Saints getting Anthony Richardson as well as, um, you know, Bryce Young entering the division. Pick number four, Joe Alt, the best offensive tackle that I've arguably ever seen. Uh, does not have the athleticism that I'm necessarily looking for. Doesn't have that really shift, like that big shiftiness, but... He's just super locked down, someone who I have a lot of confidence in. The Raiders, you can never be too mad with going offensive line. Another free agency destination for maybe quarterbacks like Jimmy Garoppolo, Tom Brady, or trade candidates like Mac Jones. This guy is going to be literally their best friend, so I don't think it's a bad investment at all. Next, the Bears going Dallas Turner. You know, ended up missing out on a, uh, we traded back, actually got an extra first round pick from Carolina, which you guys will see later. And uh, yeah, we missed out on Will Anderson. So you guys understudy. Pretty damn good deal. I love Dallas Turner. He might be even better than Will Anderson. Just when all is said and done, he just has like a legitimate X factor to him as well. Uh, pick number six. I just don't have that much faith in LA, especially if they are going to be losing uh, Jalen Ramsey. So if they're here, Brock Bowers is just kind of too good to pass on. Offensive line should be the way to go, but we kind of all know the Rams. Probably not going to do that. Next, we got Olu Fashanu to the Texans. Forgot to move the Texans logo in front of the Penn State logo, so RIP to the graphics. But uh, Olu obviously decided to return, trying to boost his draft stock. He's going to do so here. I think he's young enough to be able to be molded into a right tackle if you want him to be there. Or if you don't want to keep Laramie Tunsil, you can move back and stay at left. So pick number eight, Jared Verse. Yes, decided to return, and he's going to probably the team in the exact same spot that I probably would have taken him before. Uh, no solidified signal caller. That is a big issue to me, and um, the DC isn't even solidified yet, so we'll see what happens there. Tyree Wilson was that first-round pick that we went after as well as a corner. I think Tyree would be really good shifted inside as well, but Jared Verse is just, just a little too good to pass on at this point. Next, we got Ameka Abuka. Yes, we're, we're, we're basically replacing Paris Campbell, an Ohio State receiver, with a monster Ohio State receiver. I love Emeka Abuka. You're going to be giving Will Levis just even more options. Offensive line is already secured. I realize, and I take it on the chin, that Cedric Van Pran is not coming out in this draft. But to be fair, I think Matt Bergeron would have been a great choice for them anyways to be able to move, or like you can move Luke Whipler up and take him to the Colts. Bottom line, an offensive lineman would have been selected to place that right guard spot. It just depends on who you'd like to choose. Uh, next, we got Jeremiah Trotter. 
And um, yeah, I'll try to be a little bit more interactive over here on this side. I shift from back to forth. Jeremiah Trotter is one of those linebackers that's really special. He's better than Trenton Simpson. And uh, obviously his dad used to play in the NFL. So he has that great lineage as well. He's just going to be a really good linebacker in the NFL from what I've seen so far. Very excited to watch more of him and see him develop even further into a boss ass linebacker. Next, A.D. Mitchell. I love A.D. Mitchell. Adonai Mitchell is a freaking monster. I think that he could end up being the wide receiver to this class very easily. Big fan of him. He just pops off whenever you put on the tape. Just a really nasty receiver and something that I'd be very happy to add to this receiving core. Hopefully the Packers, again, get off their high horses and end up drafting for um, the best player available, and that's going to be A.D. Mitchell. Next, we got J.C. Latham. He has right tackle and probably left tackle versatility as well. And right tackle is a position I really need to hone in on for this team. I think that he'd be an amazing addition and has also had a mobile quarterback that might be um, the way that McDaniel wants to run his system. So I think it's a very good, very, very good fit. Next, we got Braylon Treese. So I ended up, or Braylon Trice, uh, I ended up not going an edge rusher for you guys in the mock draft. I ended up going Anthony Richardson as well as, I believe, Josh Downs. So we'll scroll down a little bit here. Yeah, Josh Downs as well as AR-15. I think that's kind of the best move given the fact that you might not have specific edge rushers at that point to be able to be high-end starters. Braylon has been an absolute pressure phenom. He's been feasting. There we go. That's where I was combining both of the words. He's feasting uh, all year long, and he's going to continue to do so at the next level. Next, we got my boy, Jerzon Newton. We all know Bill Belichick likes to take swings on players that we probably don't know too much about, but this is one of those under-the-radar guys who decided to go back because the NFL wasn't high on him, and I was watching some Devon Witherspoon tape last night. This guy was the one who's popping off more than Devon, so a uh, really special player. I love I love Jerzon. I think he's going to definitely pop off to the NFL when they watch him for another year of pure domination. Next, we got the Jets, and you know, Quinn Ewers has his issues, 100%, but if you're sitting here at 15, it's going to be the one thing that moves the needle from, you know, playoff verge to a potential Super Bowl contender. And, you know, Quinn Ewers, if he develops properly, obviously is going to be a superstar. He was, I believe, the number one player in his recruiting class, so, you know, definitely very exciting to see that, and he's going to be battling it out with Arch Manning. So you obviously know that he has to elevate his game to the best of its ability. He does not have very much of a safety net to lean back on if he ends up sucking. So excited to see that as well. Tommy Eichenberg, my linebacker one from this year's class, decided to give me the middle finger in return. He's an amazing addition here for Washington. Again, a team that I don't think needs very many things and uh, just a really damn good player. Someone who can make immediate impact on that roster. Next, Kool-Aid McKinstry going and joining Jalen Jones, who I drafted in the first round for you guys last time. Um, we'll pull it up right over here for you guys so you guys get to see. But um, yeah, Jalen Jones right down there. So uh, getting more DBs is probably the best route you can go with the guys who are on the board. You can go after a more speed deep threat and Xavier Worthy, but I think the value of Kool-Aid is just a little bit too good. So you know, you're getting an absolutely awesome player with an amazing name. So those jersey sales also are going to go up. Then we got Dante Trader Jr. here. I love Dante Trader. Maryland DBs excite me. And the guy who's coming out this year, Deontay Banks, not the guy who pops off to me. De uh, Dante Trader Jr. is the one. And I think that he could totally be super locked down, especially for the Ravens. So I'm uh, pretty sure that I actually went Cam Smith in this round, but I just don't care. It's the best value possible, and this guy is absolutely insane. The Ravens just know how to maximize the best uh, value of the pick, and this guy is just incredible. Yes, you can go another position, but I just it's a dream fit of mine, so I just wanted to force it. So pick number 19, the Steelers. You know, Deontay Johnson is going to be up for a contract at this point. Ended up not going after Jordan Addison. This is pretty much Jordan Addison. So, uh, yeah, you already know that Kenny has that type of synergy with a very similar style of deep threat player. Uh, Xavier Worthy has been very, very, very impactful for his team. At number 20, the Bears are going on Marius Mims. So, building up the offensive and defensive line, got Peter Skronsky in that first round last year. Uh, well, technically this year, but at this point, last year. And 
Marius Mims plays right tackle. I think you can continue testing him out. Braxton Jones, do whatever the hell you want. You have very versatile pieces that are young and hyper developmental. I think this is just the way to build the best situation around Justin Fields or whatever quarterback that you find fit. Next, we got JT Tuomalau going to the Broncos. So uh, I think that Sean Payton is definitely going to bring his team up to success. People are probably thinking, like, why the hell are the Panthers picking at 20? With Bryce Young, I don't see many issues with the team, to be 100% honest. But same thing here. Coaching is a huge factor. If you have a dumbass for a coach, then you're not going to do too well. And I think Sean Payton given the fact that we did trade for him, is a very good fit. So with that, you are able to make the playoffs. JT Tumalau being able to come in and just absolutely feast as an amazing edge rusher there for you guys. Next, we got Seattle going JJ McCarthy. Ended up not going a QB in this last mock draft. So, uh, you know, being able to focus then on the future, probably a good idea. Geno Smith is going to be probably, I think, 33 at the time. So, yeah, doesn't have that great of a future or that long of a future ahead of him. Get the successor here in J.J. McCarthy. Next, we got Eric Gilbert. So did not go after a tight end for the Chargers when Jordan Addison as well as Carl Brooks. I think this would be a really fun option. Smale Munden's another guy who I'd like to shout out here, but Eric Gilbert just transferred to Nebraska. Wanted to give him quite a shout. Next, we got the Jaguars' Chris Abrams drain. He was a top 30 player for me in the draft. Decided to go back. And Darius Williams has been playing very valiantly as a boundary corner. Slot corner, to me, still is a concern, and I did not address it in the mock. So uh, get great value here with an amazing player in Chris Abrams' drain. 25, so my big mistake, having Cedric Van Pran in the first. Uh, he's here, and I think the Giants would be able to enjoy that. He was my number 31 player uh, just a day ago. So he's a really good player. James Williams is next. I love him, especially for this squad. You can use him as a linebacker as well. Smale Munden, another guy you can add into there. But the defensive line was secured. You guys see it right here. Miles Murphy as well as Brian Breezy. We added a corner in Tyreek Stevenson. So uh, what was that other pick that we did as well? Andrew Voorhees. So we secured the offensive line. Uh, James Williams at 6'4", 220 would be an amazing, amazing addition to this team. The Bengals, Bucky Irving. At this point, there's already running back concerns at the moment. So being able to, you know, get your answer a year down the line, never a bad thing. I love Bucky. I think he was arguably as good as B. John Robinson this year. Just a really awesome player at a very low value position. Next, we got the Cowboys going after another developmental offensive lineman, Javon Foster. So he was my tackle one for part of this year after the Georgia game because he was he just showed so much progression, ended up deciding not to come out. He's going to be a six-year senior, but I totally believe that he has the potential to be an absolute rock star. He has that Trent Williams build to him. Uh, the question is, will he be able to reach that? I think the chances are probably 5 to 10%, which is not that great, but totally worth taking a shot on late first. Then we got Zach Zinter here to the Bills. I don't think I need to explain this very much. Just a really powerful offensive lineman. And uh, his culture, his meanness definitely fits what Bills Mafia is kind of like exuding. So I love that for him. Then we got Blake Corum here for the Eagles. Yes, a very popular pick in 2023 mocks. Decided to return after not uh, being able to play in that uh, college football playoff game. And, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. Michigan did not make the finals. The, they did not make the natty. So he's decided to come back and give it one more run with Edwards being his sidekick. He'd be a great fit in Philly regardless. Pick number 31, Christian Haynes. I love this man. He is a monster. Big fan of Christian Haynes. He's the most athletic offensive lineman that I have seen in recent memory. Just he's someone who can just run in a straight line and it looks like he's part, he's probably like one of the tight ends and it's awesome. I love Christian Haynes. He has a lot to grow, but I mean, just the potential's there. And if anybody's going to be able to reach that potential, they're probably going to do it on the 49ers, especially in that moving system. Then, to kick off the end of the draft, well, kind of not kick off, but to end the draft, Leonard Taylor, I did not draft a defensive interior for the Chiefs this whole time, so you, know, you got Isaiah McGuire in there, you also ended up with Blake Freeland, now you have your defensive interior there with Leonard Taylor, who is a very special defensive player, so let me know what you guys think, I want to thank you guys so much for supporting me as always, see you on the far side, peace.